So welcome to another MSK MRI video and in today's video I show you a speed run where I try to report an MSK MRI, especially like an MRI of the knee in as little time as possible so I will really give my best and then we do the normal run and then we compare the two and see how much I miss and if you like the format then also you know just comment below if you want to see more give the video a like if you like it and also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so let's jump right in okay so Windows has a nice stopwatch um, I will put it here and start dictating this and then we'll see how we do this all right okay well, let's go um yeah i'm ready yeah uh, this will be in german again sorry about that horizontal risk um in the meniscus made for lagering from the meniscus substance in the meniscal tibial and gutter comma do that as a normal problem and medial and tibial and punct keine knoppelschäden sonst punct in the band and proximal and knobby dick punct winzige bekürt ist bis an serinus normal punct krimi knoppel degeneration in notran compartiment punct as meniscus ohne riss punct kein knochen markadien punct tendinopathie der kubitus sehne punct as normal punct proximal stiebe für blatt nach normal punct lactis oder tibial ist normal punct nächste variable vkb und hkb Dünnes antromediales VKB-Bündel, komma beide Bündel intakt, das VKB Punkt, HKB intakt Punkt. Nächste Variable. Keine Kreppelschäden für den Portal Punkt, kein signifikanter Kreppelschäden für den Punkt, schätzen intakt Punkt, minimales Ideen zentral in Abbaufeld, Kreppel Punkt und spezifisches Subkultanz, Ideen wird die Portalarsehne Punkt. Fertatige Läsion im distalen Metadiaphysären Übergang, schätzt auf Metadiaphyse. Ohne rote Signale in den flüssigkeitssensitiven Sequenzen. Punkt neben Satzbruchteil und Doppelpunkt neu in Zeile. Horizontaler Innenmeniskusriss in die Unterfläche einstrahlen mit Verlagerung von kleinen Meniskuslappen über die mediale Randkante in den Meniskotibialen Gatter mit Knochenarkadem und Pottermedialer Kapselreizung. Punkt. Der Absatz polyrobiliertes Ganglion von der lateralen Gastrocnemus in einen Ursprung ausgehend. Punkt. Okay, so this was just uh, the reporting. I probably would have to do some um, formatting. Stuff might not have been gone through like I wanted it to be, but it took me roughly one and roughly two minutes. There were a couple of things um, that we can go through now in the second run, uh, which I saw but didn't spend enough time to further digest or invest in reporting because the main finding is uh, pretty obvious um, but yeah so let me go and then we have we don't need this okay all right so this would be the report um let's just go to the yes okay so let's go through this again uh, in maybe in the normal speed that i would do okay let's go I'm not dictating, I'm just going through the case now. So I would look at the meniscus and we can see already here the main finding, the part of the meniscus on the surface, like a, like a large flap for five millimeters. I might actually measure this um, seven millimeters, six, seven millimeters swept over, over the edge into this meniscal tibial gutter where we can see bone edema, we can see the truncation here. We might also even describe that a little bit in more details. We can see the horizontal tear. So it's actually more than just a horizontal tear. It's more like a complex tear with a flap component. And you can see here this piece is where this you know, uh, flap goes over the edge. And then we have got edema, we have joint, uh, not joint diffusion, but bone edema and capsular irritation here in this posterior middle or mid side of the knee joint um yeah so that's that but then the cartilage we can check the cartilage what happened just need to put this in so let's see cartilage wise there's no cartilage defects i don't see a cartilage something i can see now which i didn't see initially is a oblique meniscal meniscal ligament potentially you can see there's something from the posterior root of the lateral meniscus crossing 
all the way over into the anti root here. You might actually see this on the axial. Maybe there from lateral to here. Um, this was also tipping me off a little bit because of the ACL, but um, I would go with an oblique meniscal meniscal ligament. This is not clinically uh, super relevant, um, so I'm not unhappy about that. But it's nice to see this now. Then the medial collateral ligament we can see has a little bit of a thickening, a little bit of a irritation around it, which is uh, due to this because of we've got this irritation of all the posterior medial and medial capsule ligament structures, which you know it's just a friction and the problem with this displaced flap here. Where I come finding with a thickening probably after an old injury, then the edema here at this location. So what we should probably also have a good look is the meniscal capsular junction. I don't just a little bit of edema, but I don't see a frank disruption or like as in a separation. I would not go that far. You can see the meniscal tibial ligament actually coming up here nicely. So not like this, this one. And then this normal, this recess there is normal. Okay, so then we have that, then we check the bigger cyst. Bigger cyst is fine. The sensor and tendons are fine. Width of it, you must more bigger cyst, doesn't matter really much. Okay, so let's go to the lateral side. Here on the lateral side, we can see again part of this oblique meniscal meniscal ligament crossing through the joint. Then we see the lateral meniscus. There's no obvious tear. Don't see a tear cartilage wise, it's okay. We could argue whether there's some tiny fraying uh, changes here. But that's not relevant. And more bone marrow edema, probably just tendon too thick to high signal, so there's tendinosis, the muscle fine, lateral collateral ligament fine, proximal tip fib chunk fine, and iliotibial brain fine, no uh, irritation. And we don't see anything wrong at the course or the presumed course of the anterolateral ligament either, which I did not mention in my report. So then we will go centrally, and here we can see the postural bundle coming down nicely and then we have this second panel and this line here was confusing me in the speed run where it was it just looks a little bit odd like it looks it's partially inserting into the oblique meniscal meniscal ligament so maybe there's some form of variation here uh, we can try to use this sequence this is not something i looked at oh not a lot because this is not something i normally look at or use in my daily routine we can see acl bundle postural bundle come down nicely and then the posterior Anteromedial bundle, very thin and it's more inserting into this bit here. So I think there's some form of a variant. It, it doesn't look injured. Um, and we also don't have any secondary changes for a pivot shift injury. So I would just go with continuous, uh, maybe just a thin anteromedial bundle. I think that's what I said actually. Yes. But no tear and PCL looks fine. Maybe there's a tiny ganglion here, but it's everybody has this. Uh, I think it's more like a chunk recess. I know we don't describe them, so we didn't miss anything there. Um, then posture chunk on dials, they're fine too. Yeah, we don't see any new things here, also. Just a funny appearance of this in the front area. Okay. So then we go to the femoropatellar joint. Maybe there's a little bit of fraying of this cartilage at the right, uh, here. This is something I didn't describe. Uh, I said there were no cartilage defects, so maybe just some superficial fraying. Trochlear femoris cartilage is fine. No relevant diffusion, that's okay. Then extensor tendons are fine too. No, I'm not so sensitive to quite anything here. Technically, maybe we could go for some tendinosis down there. But again, it doesn't matter. And then there's something that I saw at the very last moment. Um, technically, could also be a vein when I see this now here, um, like a vascular complex. It has a little bit like a vascular complex. I just called it a gyman cyst. Um, again, this is not going to be clinically relevant at this stage. But it has more like the appearance of a gangrene rather than the vein. You can you can see the vein as a bit like a a lower, more dirty signal, and it's not going into it quite like this. I think the veins just pass it, and I would still favor a gangland cyst coming out of the origin of the lateral gastrovenous tendon at this location. Okay, so then tendons, well, we can also check a bit for the muscles, so we can see there's a bit of edema here, 
along the same membrane moses fascia here with popliteal edema. But that's really it. Okay, so nothing up at this point. I would have everything and I would be happy. So let's go to the stopwatch. Yeah, so we're within that six six minute range. Maybe I was a bit more extensive than I would normally be. Now, let's see, what do you think about this? Um, would you be interested in trying this on your own? Oh, I forgot something. Sorry about that. We have this funny lesion here, which I saw on the speed run, but forgot to look at it in the normal run. Okay, you see? Uh, maybe just concentration question. So it could be hemangioma. It's, it's fat containing. Could, it doesn't really look like a typical tuck lesion. Uh, it's a benign lesion, fat containing. Uh, maybe like a interested like poma kind of like would be in the differential but nothing that i would be worried about worried about um, so let's let's put this in do i have this in yeah so i hope you like this video and you can see we are somewhere in between two minutes to uh seven minutes somewhere that's that probably the range and if i just don't go as fast then i'm more in this three to four minute range which is very good uh where i would not miss much or add anything at all to be honest and um, the two minute or below range is where it starts to become a little bit messy and you saw I miss a couple of things. Although the ACL was a bit tricky in this case for the speed run because I needed to uh, look at it at like 30 seconds and probably even got it right there. But if it's a normal ACL, you know, you can see it's just 90 seconds for an EMRI. Um, yeah, so I still prefer the longer report or the, the, the where I spend more time because it's more well-rounded, it reflects more the quality that I want to provide to my referring physicians rather than the speech run, which is a bit superficial, but clinically still valid. Okay. Yeah, if you like this stuff, make sure you give the video a like and also share it with your colleagues, you know, uh, comment below if you want to see more. And also if you are interested in learning MSK radiology in a more in-depth way, you can go over to MSK radiology school this is a free online platform and online community with other msk uh, friendly radiologists where you can learn msk radiology there are a couple of free lectures available there we discuss things we have quizzes and everything so go there uh, it's free to use completely free you don't even have to do an account you can obviously uh, which has some benefits so go check it out you see the link somewhere here and if you really want to go to the next level in msk radiology and also certainly increase your speed and confidence then for this i have developed a virtual msk fellowship program specifically for mri which is a 12 month training program where you can really reach the next level i've done that with a lot of different radiologists from all over the world where they really get great results out of that so you can check the link here where you find more information about the virtual MSK fellowship program and I would be honored to have a chat with you and explain to you how this works in detail if you're interested so just go there there's a free training video where I talk about a little bit how it works what the problem is why people suffer with confidence in MSK MRI specifically more so than in other subjects where and also show you then what the actual solution is to overcome this hurdle so go check the one out too and yeah thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye